It'll tell you here in a second. <laughs> Yep, I did it. All right, I did it. We are. I'm live. We're live on YouTube. I couldn't get it to play inside of uh, what do you call it inside uh, Boom Time. So at least it's being recorded on there. So how's everybody doing? Good. Great. Good. 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 Yeah, good. good. If you don't mind, put put your pictures on. I want to see your faces. Okay. Give me some. Uh, give me some. Give me some eyeballs. Excellent. There we go. There we go. Got a couple pages of people on here now. Fantastic. Fantastic. Awesome. Awesome. I'm uh you guys know me. I'm usually pretty on time and punctual on these things. I'll probably only give it about a minute or two and uh, go ahead and get this thing started. So uh, that's cool. Uh, broadcasting on we are live on youtube in case anybody ever wants to in case you get kicked off or my internet goes out well if it goes out we're done anyhow so it doesn't matter i guess but uh my internet did go out my internet literally went out like a half an hour ago then came back on and went off five minutes before this thing started so i am hot spotting it uh from here so hopefully that'll work and we'll be good to go all right i see a bunch of people on here Excellent, excellent. Just cruising through. Very cool. Uh, let me uh, double check something. We're good. Excellent. Where's everybody calling in from? Give me some stuff in the chat. Maybe I can see that in the chat if you want. Or you can say it out loud. I don't care. Toronto, Central Mike. Central Georgia. Toronto. Michigan. Georgia, Michigan. Oregon. Oregon. Georgia. Columbus. Awesome, awesome. Boston, Florida. Columbus. Columbus, fantastic. Hey, what's up, Mike? Oh, Mike. Up? How are you? How are you? Mike. Excellent. All right. I am just showing everybody on here. We're good. Now I got two pages filled up. Excellent. I got more people getting on, so that's cool. I see, I see you. You guys remember, you guys remember when you were little, I don't know if you guys, some of you are old enough. Do you remember that TV show? I don't know if it was just local or if it was national called Romper Room. Does anybody remember Romper Room where they would hold that thing and you would go, uh, what was it? Like Romper, I forget what it was, Romper, Romper, Romper Boo. Anyhow, I have no idea why that's in my head right now, but uh it's either too much caffeine or less too not enough sunshine but uh we're good but anyhow the reason that popped in my head is i i always see this and i remember when people would call when they would call your name out and when it was your birthday on there all right so uh looks like we're good so i'm gonna go ahead and mute everybody and we should be good and then uh, I am going to go back to speaker view so you guys can see me and we're good. So, hey, guys, thank you so much for very uh, so very much for jumping on here. Um, I had a, a lot of stuff that's been going on in a great way, had a killer month uh, last month. It was the it was bigger than the month before, which was bigger than the month before that, which was bigger than the month before that. So uh, kudos to everybody also who's participating in that and getting that taken care of. Um, what I wanted to do is I, I kind of basically I wanted to show you guys uh, how to get a game plan together for getting promoted this month. OK, this is the month of May. Uh, so if you're watching this on the recording, you know, we're kind of doing this. This will translate over into every single month that you've ever been involved. But um, I wanted to be specific with some stuff. I am going to pull up a PowerPoint for you uh, to go through some things on here to give you some tips. Uh, that are that I think are going to uh, be very very helpful in constructing this. Now, um, I know that I know that there are some absolute truths in networking uh, principles that will never change. Um, you know, whoever shows the plan the most always wins. Uh, I know a lot of times people are looking for the easy way, uh, the shortcut, 
the secret. I used to always ask, what was the secret? What are you really doing? I used to every every big, you know, every time I would go to these meetings for years and years and years, uh, way back when I first started, I would always track down the top guys and say, hey, because I didn't think that what they were saying in front of the room was the actual truth. I wanted to know what they were doing behind the curtain. Uh, and turns out there was no behind the curtain. It was whoever showed the plan the most won. Okay, that's all it is. I have uh, I've polled people uh, in companies. Um, I have watched it over and over in my, in my career that basically it's just a matter of whoever gets the presentation in front of the most people is always the person who wins, period, bar none. That's, that's what it is. Okay, so let me, I'm going to share my screen with you and I am going to go uh, full screen on you. You can see, you can see us broadcasting inside there now. So I'm going to go live. Uh, on the PowerPoint here, let me shrink my face a little bit so I can uh, see that. And we should be should be good right there. Okay, so anyhow, so you guys can see, obviously you can see my, let me just double check. You can see my slide, correct? Thank you, Mula. I, pre, I can see you on here, so that's good. I'm going to shrink myself again so I can check it out. Um, so what I wanted to do is, I'm. this is going to be quick on this part because you guys all should be aware of this by now. What the company's doing with the momentum in May is they basically uh, um, Holton threw down another two million. Last year he threw a million in, or last month he threw a million dollars in, but this month they're throwing out another two million dollars in additional bonuses. Um, how it's going to work is if somebody enrolls in May at Coach or Higher, and you get your two uh, in May Coach or Higher, you actually are qualified for the next for seven <laughs> levels of the accelerator plan, which is pretty significant. Okay. That, and the big part about that is, is that's going to, uh, that gets you qualified for June, July and August. So uh, no matter what, no matter what you do or how you do it, this is a significant thing that you want to make sure that you get and take, taken care of. Um, okay. So uh, make sure you get that taken care of. Also, if you are in the business and you enroll a new ambassador and help them get there too, you get an additional hundred dollars. Okay. And that's going to be paid out next month. You can see all these slides I'm whipping through here too, by the way, on the uh, iBoom hub. Okay. Stimulus edition. Now we, most of you guys should be aware that the first class pack is now at seven ninety nine dollars as a promotion instead of the thousand. The good news is for your promotions, it still counts as 1000 in qualifying volume. So anything, when I show you the slide of the volume you need to hit rank, um, you can uh, you can do that. Okay, you can you can basically hit those things uh, with this volume right here. Okay, and these are the bonuses that would pay out on fast start bonuses. Okay, uh, on that. Welcome back, uh, anybody who's not in uh, who's inactive. If you touch base with them, you can get them reactivated by paying the last month. And this is what the upgrade amnesty means. Is basically they went in, they reset people's clocks instead of sixty days. We've got this, okay? So I am obviously, like I said, I'm going through these fast. These are, these are, I think, my the coolest things that just came out because you can now hit a rank and get a bonus in addition to all the money you would have earned uh, on top of that. Now, obviously, if you hit director, senior director, and executive director in this month, you don't get all of those, all three of those bonuses. You get the highest rank that you achieve. So if you 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 max out the month at Sapphire, you get a thousand dollar bonus. Okay, so you know that, and I do know that if you hit these things within like the first fifteen days of this month, uh, it, it'll give you some extra bonuses. Okay, so let me get into kind of the purpose of this thing. Uh, if you're if you if you don't mind, I got to just make sure that I gotta I gotta mute some people here real quick. Hold on a second. Stop screen share. And who do I have on here that's not muted? Make sure you're muted if you if you don't mind if you if you got it on here. Um, make sure you've muted yourself. I should have had everybody muted, but I, I occasionally it pops up somebody unmutes themselves. Okay, so the success secret. If you ever want to know how networking works, this is really all it is. Get a large group of people to do a few easy tasks over a sustained period of time. Okay, easy tasks to me are something anybody can do uh, on a consistent basis. Okay, anything that anybody could do on a consistent basis. And here's the big one. Here's the big one. I mean, I said this at the beginning. Whoever tells or shows the story, we call it telling the story, but gives the most presentations always wins. 
Um, the only reason, the only reason that I became the number one recruiter is because I've gotten the story in front of more people. That is it. Okay. The people throughout my, my organization that I've seen that have enrolled the most people because everybody's different. There's all walks of life. It's not that somebody has tapped into a different group of friends. It has nothing to do with where somebody lives. Um, you know, people in my town are different than people in your town. That is all a bunch of bahooey or bull crap. Okay. To be blunt, whoever tells the story, the most wins. Now, if I was to give you a simple doable game plan, okay, I'm going to talk to you that a lot of you are new. Okay. And those of you who are in and have teams, some of you I've already done some uh, calls with and stuff like that, but here's something that I think is very, very realistic. Okay. I backed some of the numbers down from this slide that you've seen before, but if you literally got two people per day, uh, let's say there's, and I'm going to talk to you about the consistent uh, presentations that I want to do. And I know some people on the team are starting and obviously, you know, uh, Tommy does and the upline does, and even the company does. But consistent, consistently, if you had two people per day, only three days a week, if you literally only work this thing three days a week, or you invited enough people, and I'll talk to you about the invite in a minute, uh, where you invited enough people that you had a guest, that you had a guest on a presentation three days a week. So you, you talk to enough people that during that day, two people per day, three days a week, that would be six presentations per week. Okay. If you did that consistently over the next four weeks for this month, believe it or not, you would have 24 people that would have watched a presentation. These are guests that took a look at it. That is 100% doable by every single person listening to my voice. If you just have a big enough why, I'm not going into the whole figure out your why. You When you, saw, when you joined this company, you already knew what your why is. I'm not going to go in there and, and hammer that. If you don't know it by now, you better get back to it because that's the only thing that's going to get you going. If you gave 24 presentations, meaning 24 guests watched a full presentation and you only had a 20% closing ratio, that would still allow you to enroll five new reps per month. Five new reps. And let's say the average volume, because some will come in and coach, some will come in in business, some will come in at first class. Let's say five new reps at 750 average volume at your 20% close you would have personally uh, added $3,750 in monthly volume, okay? You would have ranked already, if you're brand new, you would have already ranked up, okay? You would have already ranked up. The nice thing is, is these are doable stats. You just have to identify what you are willing to commit to on a daily, weekly, monthly basis to build this thing, okay? Now let's talk about team activity because if if you've got some people in your group and you've got some of those people on today or you're getting them to watch the replay, the team activity, whoever tells them a story most wins still applies, but let's say you get your team. Let's say you only have three people on your team that do the per day, two, two only two presentations, just three days a week, same as what you did, You not including you, not including you, just what your team is now activity-wise are doing. That'd be 18 presentations per week, 18 presentations a week at 20% signups, you would have added four new reps per week, four new reps per week. Okay. Four per week times four weeks is 12 new enrollments. And if we had 12 new enrollments to 12 new reps joined at a $750 average volume, that's 9,000 in volume. Okay. Just these two slides that I just showed you are literally the game plan for Sapphire, okay? I wanna just real quick, I'm gonna go back to it. I'm gonna start over. Personal activity, two present, making sure you had two people, three times a three, th just three days a week. You're working only three days a week. You got it, you, you did it, you invited enough people that you had a live body on a live presentation. I'm gonna talk to the li about the live presentation here in a second. Okay, that six time that that six presentations that you gave four times a week, twenty four presentations, at twenty percent close, five new reps. That's thirty seven hundred fifty in new volume. And if you got your team to do that, and you got three people of those of of those five committed, 
This is what you'd go through, right? You're Sapphire. You literally would basically, I know it's just close, but the numbers typically always work out that it always goes over if you're doing it. If you're pushing it using enthusiasm and creating uh, that kind of thing, it goes over it, okay? Because here's the requirements. And this, the full blown up sized comp plan of all levels, all promotions is in your back office under tools. You click on tools and then I think it's uh, documents, okay? To get the director, you could have personally gotten to director on what I just showed you on your personal stuff. Senior director with 5,000, executive 10, Sapphire takes 15, Ruby's 40, and then 80% 80, 80 on, em, or 80,000 in Emerald, okay? I showed you right there on those last two slides exactly a game plan if you stay consistent and got people to do, the, to do it, uh, how to get to Sapphire, okay? Uh, all right, so I wanna, I wanna, uh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna jump off of this. I'm going to stop the share and I'm gonna talk to you. I need to talk to you face to face for a second. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through some other, some other stuff on the slides, but this is real important. In all the years that I've been doing network marketing and I have made, believe it or not, I have, I've made in the last 15 years, I have never made less than six figures a year in my, in the profession, okay? And the disclaimer is not everybody does what I do because I have a high work ethic. Uh, I've been doing this for a while and so on. So there's a disclaimer. I'm not saying anybody that does what, what, what I'm, you know, that is going to make that kind of money. But what I have realized were there are some absolute uh, principles and truths that are literally like written in stone that everybody can achieve if they work the plan. Okay. The plan and, and, and it, and I, and I can always, you know, because if you go back to the basics, the basics always work. Sometimes we can get over, over complicate things. We can make things a little too, you know, sometimes you think if it looks flashy, like the, I'm guilty of this a lot, right? Like I, I try to do it at a high level, but at the same time, I got to remember that the majority of people need the simplicity because they ask themselves two questions. Every prospect asks themselves mentally two questions. Is it worth doing and can I do it? Is it worth doing and can I do it? Okay, so, so remembering that our objective is to only introduce enough people to answer that those two questions, okay? Now, here's, here's the one thing that I do know, and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna go, since I'm on, I know I'm live on YouTube, I'm gonna blow it up and I'm gonna show you all the people on here um, on this. And then, and if you're watching the recording, is what, what happens is this, is what I've seen is some of the top people in the company right now, like you're watching some people break through uh, promotions and stuff like that, right? They're breaking rank. The reason they're breaking rank is not because they are doing anything necessarily smarter than you. They are just increasing their activity. In my opinion, activity matters more than anything else. However, it has to be the income generating activity. Okay. Creating a calendar of, of presentations you're going to do is an activity, but it's not necessarily an income act generating activity. It, the things that we get make money on, the way we increase our ability to earn in the commission structure, in the comp plan, is when we get new people to view a presentation. That should be, if you were to take all the fluff out, everything else, else away, right? And we just started from scratch. It's to get a new person to view the presentation. And here's something I do want to emphasize. The presentation is as good as it needs to be. The presentation that the company has right now is as good as it needs to be. It doesn't necessarily be, need to be expanded on or taken away from it in, in most cases, right? They, these are professionals that put the presentation together. The top, some of the top networkers in the world are part of our company and run the thing, right? The number one recruiter in the history or the number one rep in the history of the world of network marketing is the guy running our company, okay? But what I'm, what I'm getting at is this, is I've realized that I watched uh, like the very, I'm gonna go back in time and I'm gonna give you some stories to put these points home. The reason I'm gonna relate some of these stories. Very first company I was in was a telecommunications. It was called Excel. We sold, uh, the, the pitch was, 
you got this is when long distance, uh, you know, phone service deregulated. And the only thing that we used, the only thing that we used was a three, three foot paper flip chart to give hotel or home presentations. That was the only thing. And that company became a billion dollar company. Okay. The next company, the next big company I was in, same scenario. We basically, we, at, at that point, we graduated to PowerPoints existed. Everybody gave the same presentation over and over and over. Everybody had a different personality. Everybody threw a little bit of their own personality into the story, the presentation, but the story stayed consistent. Take a wild guess what the very first company I had in common and the next company I had in common and next company I had and so on of all the top money earners. The only thing that they had that they were really uh, great at was consistency and saying less to more people. They learned to say less to more people. They became the messenger, not the message, became the messenger, not the message. See, I've also understood too, that a lot of people that watch some of the things that I do feel like they should be able to, uh, they need to do what I do. And I apologize for that because I look like sometimes I don't, I've maybe sometimes I forget, I forget something that's been very powerful that I forgot to do was to uh, dumb it down for myself and for people. Okay, because people again are asking themselves, is it worth doing? Can I do it? So let me, I want to go back to sharing my screen with you real quick. Um, here we go. Okay, so got my screen back up here. Rules of recruiting. Okay. Recruiting is a process, not an event. Recruiting is a process, not an event. These are some things you want to take notes on because this, there's a reason I can tell you these things. These are things that I've done uh, for year, year after year after year. All the companies that I've been in, in the last, like I said, I've, I've consistently made good money in network marketing, but I, I've built multiple teams and multiple companies very large, but in most cases, almost 99% of the time, I never brought a team over because that that is a myth. That does never really ever exist, okay? Is it's all from scratch. The reason I was able to do it from scratch was because I studied these things. I became brilliant in the basics. If you become brilliant in the basics, you become duplicatable, you become easy to follow, and so on. Recruiting is a process. Recruiting is a process, not an event. You have to remember that you, your job is to get somebody to watch a presentation, and then you, you, get the next, you do the next step with them. If they've got questions, you send them to a tool, and I'm going to show you those in a second. If, if they, if, and then, but you're always bringing new blood in. You're always bringing new people to the party. Okay? You're always inviting people, new people to the party. This one I couldn't emphasize enough. Be the messenger, not the message. I use tools constantly. I use constantly, constantly, constantly to not be the message because what happens is, is people think that if you're really sharp and you're really polished, you're really professional, that they have to be that person. That's when things mess up, okay? Now, the other thing, say less to more people. I couldn't tell you this one uh, more often. Uh, hopefully you're getting these things because the reason I repeat the same thing over and over again is because it's it's um, the most successful football coaches in the history, coaches of football, any any basically sport, especially let's use football because I love football, is like look at Bear Bryant. Bear Bryant would bring in when he recruited his players, he would be able he was able to recruit some of the best football players in the country to come to Alabama, their or, their 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 facility, their organization, their school. But he started every practice when they the first day of practice, he would hold up a football and say, gentlemen, this is a football. And he would only get them to master the basics. The basics were blocking and tackling. I am showing you right now the basics. If you become brilliant in the basics, brilliant in the basics, you cannot be stopped. It is impossible for you. Literally, it is nearly impossible for you to lose if you stay brilliant or consistent with the basics. Saying less to more people is probably one of my favorite things that I learned the hard way. But I realized that when I got over the hump of learning that not everybody's going to say yes every time, that I had to just keep putting new people in the front end of the funnel, new people in front of the message, new people that the numbers would work out. Okay. Like I said, keeping it simple. What do I have to do and can I do it? I've said that daily method of operation. The other thing that always worked for me and still to this day works is when I, when I um, created a daily method of operation that I could, that I only focused on that 24 hour period.
because I uh, it just made it easier for me to do that. I could get up and I say, today I am going to get four people to look at a presentation. I don't care if they say yes. I don't care if they say no. I don't care. My only objective is to get someone to look at the presentation. And by doing that, the law of large numbers always worked out. The law of large numbers will uh, will always you know grow your business. I, I should have had. I wish I would have remembered to put this in a slide. But here's a, here's homework for you guys right away. If you have not taken the time to listen to track six on uh, how to build your network marketing business by Jim Rohn, that's it. If you want to know how I learned how to do network marketing, believe it or not, track six was it. It was the, it's the story of the law of large numbers. The law of large numbers dictates that the longer you do something, a ratio will appear. You know, one out of 10, two out of 10, and eventually you just stay consistent with that. That has absolutely 100% always held true. Too many people I also see get into the business and what they do is they think they have to be smarter than they are, which is not true. Um, they think that they uh, that, that, that everybody, like I said, I'm going to reemphasize these things, that they have to do something different because there's a super secret that they're missing or whatever, or their upline has to be doing stuff or whatever it, may, it might be, it has nothing to do with it. This is your business. You are the master distributor of your business, period. All you have to do is picture yourself as the top recruiter, the top rep in the company, you're the CEO, you're creating this, and you start to think like that. You begin to think like that and you build it out. And you do it through, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time, daily method of operation. I always did that. I used to, I, I remember one guy used to tell a story about how he would keep 10 beans, like literally the little, you know, the little beans that you would, before you cook them, obviously not cooked beans, but he would keep 10 beans in his pocket on his left pocket. He would put them in there. And then throughout his day, when he would go about, he would introduce people to the business, uh, ask him for an invite. Can I send you something? Can we do a meeting or whatever? And by doing that and staying consistent with that, every time he talked to somebody, he would move one bean from his left pocket to his right pocket pocket. And he never stopped the day until he got them all from the left to the right. I've mentioned this on multiple calls, uh, multiple trainings. If you're new, maybe you haven't heard this. I, I won a recruiting contest in another company previously by sitting at football practice with my boys. They would be practicing, they were in Pee Wee football. I would sit there in a lawn chair underneath some trees in the shade and I made phone call after phone call after phone call after phone call, inviting someone to allow me, I would ask permission to send them a video, uh, an email, that introduced them to something, you know, the, the website or presentation. And all I did was that, and I made sure that I, I, that contest was going on, that I would ask 10 people per day, minimum 10 people per day. And I never stopped. I didn't end the day until I got my 10 people per day to allow me to send them something. And when I did, I didn't win of this five month contest. I didn't win any single month. I usually came in in the top five. But over that five month period, I was the number one recruiter. I did earn enough uh, what they, they, they were giving us points for it and put a $50,000 cash bonus in my pocket because of that. And it had nothing to do with anything besides being, you know, uh, consistent. OK, so I'm hoping you're getting some of this rules and inviting. OK, so we're going to move on. Um, I'm going to start doing uh, regular, more often, live presentations, live Zoom presentations. Now, here's, here's uh, let me actually stop my screen. I'm going to screen my, uh, I'm going to stop sharing real quick. And I want to talk to you face to face on this. The reason I want to start doing more Zoom presentations, and this can be a first exposure is this, is I know how to give a short, blunt, to the point presentation with plenty of enthusiasm. Okay. And I believe that if you watch me give a handful of presentations, you will realize that you are fully capable of doing the same thing. You are fully capable of in, you know, uh, doing a Facebook Live and saying, hey guys, I just wanted to let you know that I'm, if you can stick around and join me, I'm practicing this presentation uh, because I wanted to get good at it. I used to say that all the time. I get good at doing presentations by asking people, this is back in the day before the internet, I'm that old, um, I, you know, I mean, the internet existed, but you know, we weren't using it to the level we are today, but I would ask people permission to practice my
my presentation on them. I would ask people permission to practice my presentation on them. And I knew that if I had a, a, enough people that allowed me to practice on them, one, I was going to get good at it. And two, I was working the numbers that way um, almost accidentally on purpose, right? I wasn't putting any, per, any uh, you know, I wasn't putting any um, pressure on a person to join or anything like that. I was just saying, look, I, I got to get this thing going. I'm going to start doing live presentations in front of groups of people. If you don't mind, would you give me 15 minutes to practice my presentation on you? Give me a little critique and so on. And everybody, most of the people, because we're friends, would say yes. And then what I would do is give them a presentation. And all I did was I would read the booklet. We had a little booklet that was the three foot presentation. I would take it up. I used to wad it up in a little, I it rolled it up like a newspaper and I would sit down with somebody. It was all crinkled. It had pen marks, it had coffee stains on it. And I would, I would flip it over so they could see it. And I would give them a presentation. And I literally, the time I practiced that, the first two guys said no, the th next three said yes. The next three said yes, even when I totally bombed on the presentation, but all I did was read it, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing a little more consistent. Now, some of you I've already had the talks with, if you've got a group, you're welcome to invite me to give a presentation. I'll show you how quick I do them. I really get, I mean, I do the same presentation over and over and over again. You basically, you get someone's attention at the beginning. You say, hey, I'm going to go through this fairly quick. By going through the slides quicker, in my opinion, you address someone's how long is this going to take issue, and they see how you, and like I skip slides, some of the slides that I don't think are super relevant to them making a decision, I'm done with it. I, I just say, hey, if you want more details on all the uh, corporate officers, uh, get with the person and they can show you where to look that up on the web or go to the web page. Boom, next slide. Well, people are like, hey, I like this guy. He presents pretty quick. He does it with some enthusiasm. And if you just joke around and have fun, people remember it and they have an experience that they enjoy, okay? They enjoy it. Now, let's say this is what's gonna happen today. I'm just gonna give you guys some, some marching orders right out of the gates, is I'm, all, I'm going to, after this, I'm gonna publish in boom time and wherever, that at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm gonna do a live Zoom presentation uh, with, the power, with, the, with the company PowerPoint. Now, here's the cool part. The reason Zoom power presentations, I've started to again remember and realize, sometimes you forget this stuff because it gets monotonous, uh, but I realize that it works is it so shows social proof. If you look at all the people that join us on these things, the reason I get a consistent amount of people that join on these team Zooms is because you see that there's something going on. Would you guys all nod your heads and say, yes, I agree with that, right? And I'm going to flip through some of the, keep going, nod your heads. I'm going to go through a couple of the screens I have, excellent, excellent, okay? So everybody's understanding that it's kind of cool on here. You see during a Zoom presentation, if there's three or four people on there, that, you, that you're not crazy, right? You, you made a good decision. Other people that are seeing that, you know? that So if, so if uh, Mick and Darlene, if you guys are doing a presentation and, and I'm on there and four or five other people come on and two guests join, they're like, wow, there, there are other people doing this. Mick and Darlene aren't crazy. They maybe, maybe they are onto something, right? Because, because a stranger literally becomes an expert. A stranger literally becomes an expert. You don't realize that a lot of times you think that you have to know stuff, but you don't, you don't, okay? You don't have to know anything. All right, so let me go back to the uh, invite stuff, okay? So uh, we're going to go here. Okay, rules of inviting. Curiosity. Here's the thing. Here's how you get somebody to come to a Zoom you, I do like to use audio because I can convey enthusiasm, which I think is one of my points here, but curiosity. Most of the time, a lot of people get stuck in the trap of answering questions about something too early and they prejudge. I never, you never want to put yourself in that situation. If you start puking out of the mouth and, you know, getting too overly, overly, overexcited, da, 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 you'll lose them. You, you lose them. Okay. You have to, you have to dangle the bait. Okay. You have to dangle the bait and you use urgency. Okay. So let me give you this curiosity, urgency, and scarcity. If you wanted to write these things down, when you're inviting someone, these are the three hot buttons of how to get somebody to do anything. Um, I do believe this is on the cash cow 
uh, training series. The cash cow would be the, the Holton Bugs training series. I'm pretty sure it's now in the back office. If you've signed up for the 1995 under the tools, uh, under the trainings, I think it's the, it's track two, I believe, on inviting. You create curiosity, urgency with that, and scarcity. Like if I were you inviting someone to come on at five o'clock, I would say, listen, uh, you know, hey, Bill, listen, uh, you know, and when I say back to audio, you can call somebody or you could leave them an audio message on their phone or whatever, uh, you know, and send them a text message through audio or Facebook Messenger. They've got that. And the cool part about urgency and curiosity is on Facebook Messenger, you can only leave up to one minute. So you have one minute <laughs> or minimum uh, maximum to actually get that message across. So if I was to talk to, I know Tony, you're on here, Tony Stewart. Um, I would go on here and say, you know, Hey, Tony, Mike Healy, listen, man, uh, I don't know what you've got going on at five o'clock, but there's a new company that just launched. They are crushing it. There are people making some pretty insane amounts of money. Um, I don't know if they're going to do another presentation anytime soon. It's kind of a private thing. Uh, they're just allowing us to invite a handful of people on here. I thought about you and I wanted to get you on. Okay. Go to this link. I'll put it in here and uh, check it out. It's at five o'clock Eastern standard time. And I'll see you there, man. Thanks. Boom. And if you literally leave messages like that, you have not opened them up to kind of basically go look at everything, get more details and stuff like that. You're just trying to get them to get on there and you just, you just go on to the link and they're good to go. And if you noticed, I use enthusiasm using all these three things, the curiosity, urgency, and scarcity creates with created with enthusiasm, separates the winners, the, the, the winners and the losers. Okay. If I did this message where I said, Hey, Tony, um, it's Healy, uh, five o'clock, there's guys doing a presentation. You get what I'm saying, right? You get what I'm saying. But if I do it with curiosity, urgency, and wanting to crush it, that's how you build a business. That's how you get this thing uh, rocking and rolling very quickly. Okay. This is what it is at five o'clock. I'm going to post this in the boom time group. Okay. I basically put a little thing right here. It says uh, topic creating secondary income without getting a second job. Okay. It's just enthusiasm. Now I wanted to, I wanted to touch this. I left this slide in here because I wanted, I think it's important. Uh, going back to this, right? Hey, Robin, go ahead and mute your phone. I think you popped up if you don't mind uh, or your computer, whatever you're on. But uh, so at five o'clock, I'm doing this. Here's the thing is all again, I said, I'm going to give quick presentations. I'm going to say less to more people, less to more people, less to more people, less to more people. And by doing that, questions will come up. It's inevitable. People are always going to ask questions. How do I answer those questions? I forgot. To, okay. How do I answer those questions in case you didn't know it? Because a lot of you are new and I just haven't mentioned it for quite some time. I do have a generic website called that you can go, to, you can send people to recordbreakinggrowth.com that I have the sizzle call, a 10 minute presentation, a launch of Vibrides, a uh, Holden speech from, you know, the longer speech. I've got some interviews on there. I've got the stuff that our team gives to each other when we join the whole nine yards. It's a great place to send somebody. Also, you can use this as an initial thing. Or if somebody says, well, I, you know, I've heard about those things. I'm not sure. Hey, let me invite you into our private five-star group. Go in there and look around and see all the people that are in. Uh, I believe we've got like close to two or three. What does that say? That's th we have over 3,000 members now in the five-star group. Lots of stuff in there for them to look around at. You can even send them to here. The reason I've always had these three things as kind of my closers, my things that I share with people, even if they get more information, there are just some people that need to see everything to feel confident. I'm not one of those guys. I need to know a few things, trust the person I'm in business with, trust a little bit about the credibility of the company to go out there and kill it. If somebody, if you wanted to send somebody to my rep training, they could go there and look around. These are things that have 100% of the time worked every time I've built a business because I've used consistency of saying less to more people, urgency for the invite to take a look at something. If you, okay, proof. If you guys listen to the way Tommy Johnson speaks, it's all enthusiastic with urgency. 
Why is he a diamond? Okay. The only reason I'm not diamond right now is I got complacent. I got lazy in a, in a little bit of cases to where, oh, you know, I, I just, people get recruited. I getting people in, but I haven't put in that, put that urgency again, that enthusiasm, that hammer. I know when I'm doing it wrong or right. Come, sometimes you got to make a, you got to, you got to look in the mirror and make an adjustment, right? You have to look in the mirror and make an adjustment. And I fully believe that you guys are all capable of following this consistent path of doing these easy things consistently to get those, the, the ranks this month, hit these ranks. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm telling you, the company's going to, they're going to totally take care of the people that hit rank hitting Sapphire is monumental in this company. And it's not that big of a promotion. If you think about it, if you really, really want to crush this thing, your focus should be, if you haven't already hit it, Sapphire, because Sapphire just sets you apart. It's hard enough that you really had to stretch, but not so hard that you don't get the reward. But the stuff that Holton does for Sapphires and above is unbelievable unbelievable a lot of you guys qualified to be on the training that Holton did on I think it was Monday right was that insane or what like it was it was unbelievable this is what in, inspired me to do this this call actually was it was just incredible information from the guy who's mastered it and I just showed you my my spin on it which is pretty much the same thing his is even better but they do some amazing things for sapphires and above. I want to have a sapphire factory. I don't, I don't want to hear in all the time about Mike Keeley, you know, what he's done or anything like that. I want to hear about you guys. I love the fact that a lot of you are hitting rank, you know, your, your customers. That's awesome. I can promote that. Okay. But right now, the best time to build a home-based business is when everybody's home. Home, home, uh, Home business is now one of the most largely searched keyword terms in the world. In the world, okay? Because people, one, they don't know when they're going back to work and they're looking for stuff that they can do. We have that. We've got technology. Most of you guys are already trained to do this kind of thing that it's going to absolutely blow up. I mean, we're looking at a situation, a scenario here where people also are realizing they better have a plan B, okay? My income went up every single month during COVID, my income has gone up. That doesn't make any logical sense to everybody who's been doing nine to five. Us crazy pyramid building network marketing people out there that everybody's labels are insane. How you like me now kind of thing, right? How you like me now? Because it works. You got to dig your well before you're thirsty. You got to dig your well before you're thirsty. And this is what we've got going on. We have, we have a better mousetrap. We have a better mousetrap that I believe than any other company out there. There's a lot of great companies out there with community and culture, but we're, you guys are seeing this early. You're seeing this early, but the best time to catch a wave is not when it's past you, but when you see it in the distance and you have the foresight to start paddling, surfers that want to catch waves and ride them into the beach, see them in the distance and don't paddle away from them. They see them and they paddle at them. They paddle at them because then when the wave starts to crest, even a bad surfer can hit the beach if he catches a big enough wave. A rising tide lifts all ships. Last month, our company had the largest month it's ever had during what we would consider lockdown, home, home, you know, home, we've all been basically under home arrest uh, for doing this worldwide. I mean, there's people all over the world that are on here doing this, okay? So all that being said, okay, because I got to wind it down and then I got to get catch my breath, go eat again. And then I'm going to post in there about the five, uh, five o'clock, okay? If you, if you, I would recommend that you take the time to invite some guests on that five o'clock presentation. Okay, it's going to be quick, succinct, to the point, um, and then I'm going to make sure everybody points back to the person that got them on there. That's how these things work. And what you'll see is watching these presentations again and again and again, you will hear the story, you will hear the story, you will hear the story, and you are fully going to be fully capable of doing it again and again and again. Does this make sense?
Everybody go like that. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So if you need to take off, you're totally dismissed. You're welcome to bolt. Uh, if anybody's got any questions or on anything, now's the time to throw them out at me because otherwise I'm going to jump off and uh, get that out because I got to I gotta get that out there. Are we good? Oh, 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 Bernard Merton, I saw you on here and I know Richard, you're on here. Uh, Richard, raise your hand real quick and wave. Okay, Richard's up there. Bernard, raise your hand. Okay, uh, Richard's in Sweden, Bernard's in Germany. I know there's some people that are looking for some German and Swedish presenters. These guys are fantastic. Uh, they're going to start, they've been doing, I know Bernard's doing some presentations in German. Uh, you can look at, you know, maybe take a screenshot, write his name down. You can find him on Facebook. Richard, uh, he and I did a group uh, present. We did a training today, just kind of a little get together what they're doing. Um, also, I know we've got, uh, where are you at? Brian Richardson's on here. And I don't think I was able to get, uh, you know, you guys know the Trinidad and Tobago group. Those guys are doing presentations on a regular basis. I'm going to do some for them and stuff. I know Troy Bell and you guys are starting to do regular presentations. Uh, Mick and Darlene, I'm assuming you guys probably have because otherwise you wouldn't have sponsored so many people. <laughs> so amazing how that happens, right? It's a, it's a miracle. Um, in fact, unmute yourselves real quick. Uh, Mick and Darlene, I want to, I want to, want you guys to say a few things. Just, uh, you guys have started doing your own presentations, correct? Yes. Okay. And you probably keeping them within 20, 30 minute kind of thing. About 30 to 40. We're trying. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. It's all yeah. good, but it's working because yeah. you consistently. Now, let me ask you this. Before you were doing presentations, were you sponsoring people? No. No. Really? That's so weird. <laughs> that is the strangest thing. I never would have thought that. Right? Yeah. We did five presentations in one day, Mike. Did you really? Yeah. Yeah. One we day. did. That's fantastic. And it's not that hard. After you did it, you felt this sense of relief too, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. And did you press, have you gotten more comfortable doing those presentations? Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. And we still yeah. watch the, the company ones too. They still get some nuggets from, you know, what everyone else is doing. Yeah. Take little pieces yeah. from everyone's presentation and make our own. Yeah. I do the same thing. What was funny is David Hunt, you know, who's an Emerald yeah. in England. Right. He came up to me and told me that he did the same thing. And I laughed right back at him. I said, Believe it or not, I figured out how to do the presentation from watching yours. I like it. I, yeah. I love his. D David yeah. Hunt, he's a, he's got he's a really good guy. He's an emerald uh, from England. Used to be a soccer professional soccer, soccer player. Uh, and you guys, if you don't know this, you can go to the uh, the uh, uh, iBoomerang Facebook page, click on videos, yeah. and then you'll see all the presentations that have ever done, been done. And if you scroll through, you can see the name of the person, the presenter, whether it's Spanish, English, German, French, whatever it might be. And if you need those, you can use those. You just, uh, all you do is click on it and right click, and it'll give you the URL of that actual video. You can always send it to somebody. Okay. But uh, yeah, I mean, you guys are being consistent with the thing, correct? Yeah. yeah. And you're going to probably speed that up because I know you guys got some big goals for this month. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Sapphire. Yeah. Yeah, in the next few weeks, obviously, right? Yeah. You're, you're gonna you're gonna crush it out there. Uh, it. Who else? And I know Peter, you're gonna be doing some presentations. Tara Bradshaw, I know you guys started some stuff. I see you on regular calls. Uh, Tara, unmute yourself real quick. Jump up here. Okay. Hey, Mike. Okay, so you guys uh, may or may not heard. So uh, Tara is not in my organization, mm -hmm. uh, but we've worked closely together, kind of. Not not you know like we I, we don't do a lot for each other. But Tommy, when you hit Sapphire, Tommy has a special group that we do. We do, we get together collectively as Sapphires and above on this. And uh, Tara, which really cool is a lot of you, nobody I think has heard you on any of my calls, uh, but it's kind of nice that I could saw you on here. Thank you. And give, get your perspective because we let each other, a lot of us, we do let each other in. We cross pollinate is what I call it in different groups and Facebook groups and stuff like that. And she has her own group. Uh, Tara, you... Uh, okay, you're a Sapphire, correct? Correct, yeah. A and now you've recently had some revelations I want you to share with everybody that you shared with us on, on our Monday thing. 
Yes, I would love to. Thanks, Mike, first of all, for inviting everyone on Tommy Johnson's team, because I know I'm not under you. So I appreciate being able to be a fly on the wall because I learn something every time I listen to you. And uh, it's pretty incredible to be able to be on the calls with you on Monday with Tommy Johnson's team. And Mike said something that at the time I didn't get, but Mike said, uh, I wish I knew the quote exactly, but that your business started growing when you stopped chasing money and started chasing mentorship. And so when I started chasing mentorship, I understood exactly what you meant and uh, started asking, asking Ex for help. Expand on that because I remember okay. uh, when, when, and I, uh, I remember I did say that on actually, I think the corporate call. Um, but expand on that because that's, that's a, that's a big aha moment and you've already gotten the results from that. So yes. go ahead and expand so, on that. So I was listening to Mr. Edwin Haynes first success tips that he was doing and taking notes on how he was doing his invite. And when he used the words of, okay, great. I'm going to invite you to a private call at whatever time a light bulb went off in my head and I thought I want to do that. And so where I am placed in the team, I actually am able to text Mr. Tommy Johnson and ask him if he will do a Zoom presentation for my team. And so that's exactly what I did. And he said, of course. And I was so excited that he would do a Zoom presentation for my team. I didn't want to let him down. And so I was out there inviting like crazy. And <clears throat> I actually panicked the night before that, what if nobody is on? And so I actually went to three of my best friends who for various reasons would not be open to looking at network marketing. In fact, one of them is the principal of my kid's school, successful. I have a lot of respect for her, very educated. I don't have a college degree. Um, but just have a lot of respect. And so I actually went and I asked them, hey, I am really nervous about doing my first Zoom with my mentor. Will you guys jump on just so that if I get tongue tied, there's a friendly face. And I was so thankful that they were on there and it built my confidence. And after that started doing Zooms for our team. And I understood what you meant about chasing mentorship instead of chasing the money because when that mentorship comes it's priceless and it's fun and then i'm able to help more people so that's gold and i actually want to uh I, you, you <clears throat> triggered a thought here's the other thing too is a lot of people think that they have to be tied to the hip with who they're with right but if you think about it tara you didn't talk to edwin haynes did you Correct. <clears throat> but you, but he put it out there. He did a video on it. He did a Zoom. He did a live, a training on it. You know, the, the flight schools or whatever it was. And you took the initiative to learn that. Yes. And by doing that, hopefully, is everybody getting this? This is called a clue. Success leaves clues, right? And you did it. And, and you've now, because you, here was what was cool too, is You've shared that with your team, and now your team has have now been able to take on that same scenario, that situation, right? There, they've taken on that leader role that you've initiated, and telling them what to do. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And now you're now you got stuff going, and it's being more consistent, and you're seeing mm -hmm. the the momentum happen. Yes. Yes. Perfect. And Tara, we're excited. Thank you. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad I uh, I was uh, going through the screens here and I saw you on here. Thank you very much for that. Pre appreciate that. Uh, Richard, Jack and Ellie, I want you to unmute yourself real quick. I want to introduce everybody to you. Go ahead, Richard. Hello. Okay, there you are. You're where at, Richard? I'm in Gothenburg in Sweden. Gothenburg in Sweden. Now yeah. here's, okay, so I want to, I'm going to brag on you a little bit because I forgot, but you, you triggered a thought to, of mine. You've been, have you, how many of the events have you been to already? Conferences uh, like. I've, uh, I've been, Las Vegas was my, uh, my first event. Okay. So you went to Vegas. That's what it was, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You had gotten in 
to the company. Yeah. You didn't have a team yet. No. Nope. And at how long of a flight and how long did it take you to get to Las Vegas from where you were at? I think uh, 15 hours. How many? 15 hours. 15 hours. Okay. So Richard comes and gets, goes to the event. And what happened to you when you went to that event? What was the mind change? What, what changed there? Uh, I, I thought it was uh, unbelievable that it could be like uh, 7,000 people at the first event uh, for a company that was uh, so young. Yeah, we were only, uh, I think, six months old at the time during pre-launch, yeah. right? Yeah. And this was at the o Orleans Hotel, in case you guys didn't know that. A lot of you have seen that image. And that's where this next one in August is going to be. Uh, so we're there. Now, here's, here's the good part, is you have now also... Uh, because of your conviction, because of what you've done, you started to now give presentations, invited people to take a look at, and you've got a good team now starting to grow, correct? Yeah, yeah. Really and good. What, what have you been doing with your team? Like, how do you, how have you gotten them engaged kind of thing? Uh, I, uh, I uh, was updated in uh, like MLM groups and uh, I uh, found their interests in uh, what I was doing. And you I have a kid in the background, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered what that noise was. That's perfect because people don't realize that we, everybody's got families. Everybody's got people around them a lot of times. I remember doing conference calls all the time and my little kids would be running under my legs uh, and I'm trying to look like this and hide it and stuff like that. But go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, I don't remember. You are, your, your, your group, like you've got a good group. Yeah. Like you guys have been doing some stuff. Yeah, we're like... Uh, Eight, eight people uh, in uh, Sweden now uh, for the last uh, six months. Awesome, that's good. And you got some, yeah, and you got good people and now they're they're all starting to get engaged. You've been doing some presentations and stuff like that. So I just yeah. wanted to bring you up. Thank you for that. I appreciate the, the input. You've been doing a great job leading this team. Now, real quick, last thing on that. Were you nervous to be the leader? Yeah, at the beginning, but uh, but uh, I'm grow I'm growing uh, every day. Perfect, awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, awesome. And I want to I want to I want to touch on that real quick with uh, Richard. Is what's really cool about that? I'm glad this popped into my head. Is Richard was not afraid to be the leader because here's the thing: there's a confusion between leadership. Uh, I think a lot of times. Leading is not necessarily, being a leader does not necessarily mean you are the sharpest, bestest. I'm not saying that about you, Richard, that you're yeah. the sharpest, best, and brightest. Leadership is just a lot of times doing it, just taking the initiative to be the one that makes the noise, that wa get, makes waves in the pool, like, you know, like making waves in the pool. And a lot of times people, people follow leadership. People follow leadership. People want to follow people that are going somewhere. And if you make yourself that person, whether you know what you're doing or not has nothing to do with it. I promise. It has everything to do with you just being determined that you're going to be crazy enough to go for it. That regardless of what people say, you're going to do it. Speaking of crazy, Brian Richardson, you heard your voice. <laughs> Brian, unmute yourself. I want to ask you some questions now. Uh, Brian is from uh, Trinidad and Tobago. You guys probably Hi, guys. Him. How are we doing? Good, good. Brian is, what's what's fun about been working with Brian, and some of you guys may or may not have seen the presentation that uh, we've been doing, but um, uh, what they've been doing, but you've you've had some networking experience before you're, you, you've got, uh, it's you, you. Uh, Brian, and then you've got Richard down there, and you guys are actually just tearing it up. Like you're really starting to grow a good business down there. And what have you been doing? What of the things you've heard me say? What are some of the things you would have agreed that you've used in your past that tr have translated every time you've been in something and what we are today? I think you said it to me today on a call too. Um, one, one of the things that I found, guys, was um, you 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 need to ensure that you are doing multiple presentations a day. Um, when I ran, um, I was a senior manager in an auto, auto, auto sales company. And the person who did the most demos had the highest amount of sales. So what I normally recommend 
as what Mike would have also recommended is that the more persons you're in front of, that stood off for me. Um, numbers, it's a numbers game. Once you get in front of a lot of persons and you're able to translate the message and tell stories, um, get into your stories as well, Mike, and that's something you spoke about. Facts tell, stories sell. What are your stories? What are your stories you're developing in iBoomerang? What are your stories? What are your experiences you have had, not necessarily with iBoomerang, but in business, in your personal life? Tell your why factor. Begin to tell your story as well when you translate a person because this is a personal business. People will buy you before they buy a boomerang. And that's something I know, Mike. I actually found Mike online. I looked at Mike for about almost three weeks and picked Mike. I picked Mike. And because what he, what, what, what he uh, transmitted, things that he said, conveyed and resonated with my core value. So I picked Mike as my, my upline and called him and said, hey, I want to enroll with you. He had no idea who I was. So tell your stories, um, do as much presentation, and don't try to be the expert. Mike, another point you made that I love, the messenger. A lot of us want to position ourselves as the message. Your mailman, your delivery man does not read your mail. He hands it to you. So be, become the message, not the messenger. Do not position yourself as the be it all and end it all and the guru of networking because you intimidate more than you attract. You will intimidate, uh, so you intimidate. I told Mike, and we had a meeting earlier, that persons want to be like us. That's not it. This is 20 years. Uh, Mike is about 20 years. Tommy's about the same thing, 20 years. Tell your story with a level of authenticity that you become believable, you become trustworthy. And once person begin to trust you and believe in you, then they'll want to align themselves to you. You can't be the next Mike, Keely, or Tommy. So. Guys, it's very simple. Keep doing it every day. And um, I think that repetition is the key. Once you do this every day, you become better and better and better. Uh, you start off with one presentation, two presentations a day, and be comfortable. Mike, I always say, Mike, be comfortable to make mistakes. Be comfortable to fumble. Comfortable to forget a slide. Comfortable to not say the right thing. The world wants authenticity. They don't want experts. They want all authenticity. That's what they buy. Be you. You bring a special gift to the, to the floor, bring that gift to the floor. And that gift is you. I'm honored to be here with so many of you. It's really my honor to be here with Mike and the team. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Appreciate that input. So everybody, uh, I could probably go on and on and on here. Um, you guys, I really do believe, so make sure you, uh, so I'll put this in the boom time group, the, uh, uh, the presentation at five o'clock. Actually, you guys, um, it's the same link. So I figured out how to get the, it's the same Zoom link, you know, healy.click forward slash Zoom uh, is just a hyperlink to the, you know, it's a redirect. Uh, so you can use that same one at five o'clock that you want to get people to look at it, uh, to view it. I'm just going to go through a very quick presentation, do the best I can. If I mess up, no big deal, because there's more presentations coming, right? That's, that's kind of how it works, okay? So you guys are awesome. I do appreciate everybody being on here. Uh, I've, I've kept you on here for an hour and a lot of you stayed almost the entire time. So thank you very much for that. And uh, just to keep up the great work, uh, I expect some big things from you guys this month. It's going to be awesome. And, uh, you know, I want to make sure we recognize. And again, if you get promoted, make sure you let me know. Sometimes I can't see that stuff in the back office because uh, I don't want to make uh, let you get uh, slip through the cracks of not getting anything done. So Len, thank you very much. Appreciate that. So uh, anyhow, I'm going to jump off. I'm going to close this out, end it. And uh, you guys are awesome. Everybody wave to each other. Say goodbye. Thanks, Mike. Thank Bye, you. guys. Thank Thanks, Bye, guys. guys. I'll unmute everybody. Everybody's unmuted, I think. Bye, guys. Thank you, Mike. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you guys. Bye. Awesome. Awesome. Bye. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Bye. Thank you. Yeah, he's going to try to manipulate somebody.